Hey guys, I'm Lou and in today's video I'll be reviewing Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nan. This is the second book in the Girls of Paper and Fire series. I did a review of Girls of Paper and Fire which I'll link up above and in the description box down below. That video is currently my second most viewed video on this channel and I wanted to do a follow-up and review this book because I wanted to help out this series as much as I can in promoting it because I love it. I got this advanced reader copy at Yalk. I was so happy when I managed to get it. It was my main goal of Yalk to try and get this book and I did and honestly it was like my entire year was made. Not only that but I managed to meet Natasha and I actually even got this arc signed and she's so lovely. <laughs> Look, it's to me. <laughs> I love her, she was so nice when we was talking and I felt like she went beyond what she needed to for her fans because she did two signings and I just, I love her. <laughs> I also love her books. Before I go into the summary and review of this book, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've also recently created a Depop, so you guys should go and check it out. You might see some familiar books on there. This review may contain spoilers in regards to the first book, so you have been warned. The summary is as follows. Lei and Ren have escaped their oppressive lives in the hidden palace, but soon learns that freedom comes with a terrible cost. Lei, the naive country girl who became a royal courtesan, is now known as Moon Chosen, the commoner who managed to do what no one else could. But slaying the cruel demon king wasn't part of the plan, it was just the beginning. Now Lei and her warrior love Ren must travel the kingdom to gain support of the far-flung rebel clans. The journey is made even more treacherous thanks to a heavy bounty on Lei's head, as well as insidious doubts that threaten to tear Lei and Ren apart from within. While an evil plot to eliminate the rebel uprising is taking shape, fueled by dark magic and vengeance, will Lei succeed in her quest to throw the monarchy and protect her love for Ren, or will she fall victim to the sinister magic that seeks to destroy her? Dun dun dun! This book follows on a few weeks after the first book, and if you've read the first book you know how much of an explosive ending that was. Alay and Ren are safe in their remote sanctuary, which makes the book start off really slow. It takes about 50 pages for the book to become more plot driven. The first 50 pages are dedicated to getting reacquainted to Lei and Ren, as well as establishing new characters. At the time I was reading this book, I didn't mind that too much. I liked the soft easing into the book, it wasn't like I had to suddenly go and reread the first book. It was like a slow recollection of what happened. I realise now, after having read it and thinking about this book, that the first 50 pages, the beginning, is made for you to be heartbroken, essentially. <laughs> because those 50 pages make you care about characters, and then stuff happens. <laughs> Stuff happens. I think if it wasn't for the first 50 pages, I probably wouldn't have cried three times that I did whilst reading this book. I think this was well done because I usually see things being slow paced and slow starts as a negative, but this time I understand why it was done this way and I really appreciated the crafting of the writing. The pacing obviously increases beyond the 50 pages. It builds up to a climax and then it ends on a cliffhanger, which is great because now I need the third book and I would kill people for it. It leaves you wanting more so badly and it makes you really want to find out what happened to the characters. This book is also told through multiple perspectives. I would say that it's probably 90% lay and the rest of the characters are to show what's happening in the wider kingdom. I really appreciated the fact that it wasn't multiple perspectives of the same people in Lei's party, it was multiple peoples across the kingdom. Like I really like that because it honestly gave you the bigger picture. It gave you a greater perspective as to what was happening and also made you think about characters which you may have forgotten like I did. The main characters are in hiding. They're planning a revolution to topple an oppressive regime. Like things feel like they're on a much larger scale, especially compared to book one. It's like a really long game of chess. What I found most interesting about this book is the development of the characters. In book one, 
Ren was my favourite character and it's really interesting for me to see that in book two it's changed to Lei. I liked seeing the relationships change, I liked the introduction of the new characters. I liked getting to know the characters of Bo, Merin, Nita and Hiro. It'll be really interesting to see how their characters develop in the next book. It poses really interesting questions about the greater good and how much Lei is willing to sacrifice in order to enact change. I am kind of sad to say this but I did prefer the first book more. This book felt like it was the build up to the next book. If this series is a trilogy it feels like it suffers from second book syndrome. It's not to say that this book isn't good, I'm just saying that it's not as good as the first one but that's also not to say that I didn't enjoy reading this book. I loved this book. The pages flew by and I ended up reading half of the book in one go. I enjoyed the emotional journey that it made me go on. In the end I gave this book four out of five stars. I would recommend this book and this series because it is so gripping. These books will consume your lives and have such great representation. So that was my review of Girls of Storm and Shadow. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my depop and i hope to see you guys again soon bye